They were the outstanding heroes who stood to defend the religion of Islam, the sacredness of the progeny of the Holy Prophet. They were labeled as the best companions, those who displayed exemplary loyalty and devotion. They were the companions of the Mamluk Hussein. at Karbala were some freed slaves. Most of them were from Abyssinia, the present-day Ethiopia. Some of them belonged to Imam Hussein's family and others to the companions of Imam who remained with him. On the night before Ashura, Imam and the companions freed all their slaves and urged them to go away and seek their safety. But those slaves did not leave. Among them was an Abyssinian called John. And one of the wonderful aspects of that can be derived from Karbala and the ultimate sacrifice of Imam Hussein is this university of principles and values that emerge from the movement of the grandson of the Holy Prophet. In other words, for the people to come forward and for them to analyze the tragedy of Karbala, many people can derive different aspects and lessons to apply in their lives. And one of those is the universality of the movement of Imam Hussein, meaning that it's not only confined to a particular nationality or a group of people who were from a tribe or from even a particular area or a nation, but it involved different communities and people representing different tribes and backgrounds and one of those was a man by the name of Joan ben Hawi. He was a servant to Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, a close companion of Imam Ali. His full name was John ibn Hawai al-Kilabi. He returned to Medina after Abu Dhar was banished by the third caliph and became loyal to the Ahlul Bayt. He was in the service of Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein. He came to Karbala with Imam Hussein and was responsible for fixing and preparing the swords and various other weapons. He fought with the Imam until he was killed. Now, Joan was a slave man who was purchased by Amir al Mu'mineen. Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and gifted to Abu Dharr al-Ghafari radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi the famous devout faithful companion of the Holy Prophet and Amir al muminin Now after Abu Dharr passed away Joan decided and remained with Imam al-Hasan al-Mujtaba alayhi salam and after the martyrdom of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam Joan remained with Imam al Hussein and he accompanied him towards Karbala and was with him on the day of Ashura and was martyred with him. But of course, what Imam al Hussein salam did quite regularly was that he informed his companions about what was about to happen. He did not give them this indication that there would be a miraculous victory and their lives would be spared and they would be saved. He told them the reality and that tomorrow, when he spoke to them a day before Ashura, I said tomorrow it will be about a slaughter that will take place. And when he told people like Joan, he said to him, you are free. So he freed him. You are free to go. You do not necessarily need to stay. But John, and this is characteristic of those slave men and women 
who were with the Ahl al-Bayt السلام, when they are freed like when Imam al-Sajjad would free a number of them on the day of Eid, on the night of Eid they would beseech them, the imma, that no, we do not wish to leave, we want to stay with you contrary to many others because when they're granted their freedom they would immediately take this opportunity yet their life with the imma alayhum salam was so momentous and inspirational that these slave men and women would choose to remain with their imma alayhum salam instead of attaining this freedom and living their lives outside the homes of the Ahl al-Bayt and therefore John would beseech Imam al Hussein and would say to him that I wish that my blood would be sacrificed for your sake and for the sake of the religion of Islam and therefore please accept me and my sacrifice alongside your companions Imam al-Hussein accepted this and he allowed him to fight in the battlefield and remember John and many others were schooled in this wonderful household of sacrifice altruism and devotion and sincerity and therefore one is not surprised about a man like John who when he's given the opportunity to run from the battlefield and save his life would choose to sacrifice it and would not hesitate and history does not record any hesitation from this black slave he went onto the battlefield he fought valiantly we are told in history he killed 25 25 of the army combatants of the army of Umar ibn Sa'd were killed by John ibn Hawi until eventually he attained martyrdom and when he attained martyrdom Imam al Hussein came and sat next to him now the narrations tell us that Sayyid al-Shuhada salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi came and placed his cheeks on the cheeks of John and he did exactly the same when it came to his son Ali al-Akbar which highlights how Imam السلام, was displaying these wonderful lessons in breaking any form of nationalism or tribalism, racism, bigotry and one of the lessons that emerges from Karbala and the sacrifice of Imam al Hussein and his Ahl al-Bayt and his Ashab is indeed this the fact that Islam denounces racial prejudice and one of the examples indeed is John and how he stood with Imam al Hussein. John was sent as a gift from Abu Dhar al Ghifari to the household of Imam Ali and Lady Fatima. In the company of Imam Ali, he learned the tafsir of the Holy Quran and traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He also knew the Quran by heart. When Imam Ali السلام, was martyred, John stayed with Imam Al Hassan and after that, Imam Al Hussein. Imam al Hussein السلام, when he came next to the body of John, he said, Allahumma bayyid wajha wa tayyib riha. Oh Allah, illuminate his face. That's how it should be understood on the day of judgment. Because we are told on the day of judgment, those who are saved are the ones whose face yawma tabyaddu wujuh wa taswaddu wujuh. The Quran says on the day in which some faces, irrespective of the color and the complexion in this world, this is not what we are talking about. Allah says, Inna akramakum Allahi atqakum. The best amongst you is not anyone who belongs to a certain tribe or family or has a particular denomination. The best amongst you is the one who displays God consciousness and taqwa. And therefore, on the day of judgment, certain faces will be illuminated. And this is what Imam al Hussein السلام, was praying for. for John Mola or the slave of Abu Dhar. He says, Allahumma bayyid wajha wa tayyib riha. In other words, makes his smell that which is of the fragrance of musk, which narrations tell us people when they passed by the body of John, they can smell the fragrance of musk emerging from that area. But then Imam al Hussein mentions something also quite beautiful. He says to him, he prayed to Allah, Wahshurhu ma'a Muhammadin, 
صلى الله عليه وآله وعرف بينه وبين آل محمد عليهم السلام two things resurrect him with the holy prophet الله أكبر how beautiful can it be that an imam of the time the representative of Allah the معصوم المفروض الطاعة says and supplicates to Allah Allah raise this individual with the holy prophet but not only that وعرفه مع آل محمد and make him have this معرفة this deep cognizance and knowledge of the progeny of the Holy Prophet. And these were indeed important statements made by Imam al Hussein demonstrating the sacrifice of John. When Imam Hussein السلام, left Medina, John insisted on joining him. On the night before Ashura, John spent the whole night sharpening his sword whilst reciting the Holy Quran. The next day was the tragic day of Ashura. Yazid's soldiers blew the trumpets to start the battle. One by one, Imam's companions took permission to go for battle. One by one, Hussein's companions were martyred. All of them fought bravely and died a hero's death. John would see this and cry. At midday, after the Hur prayers, John came to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He stood silently with arms folded. Imam Hussein alayhi salam looked at John and said, John, my friend, what is the matter? My master, enough is enough. I cannot bear to see any more suffering. I cannot bear to see the children of Fatima alayhi salam killed in front of me. Please, my master, allow me to go to the battlefield. John, you are an old man. Jihad is not wajib for an old man like you. You are also my free slave. It is time for you to depart us. The enemies are not after you. They want to kill me. I cannot allow you to die, Imam replied to John. John was determined to get permission. Master, I know why you are not letting me go to the battlefield. Is it because I have been with you at good times and you prefer me not to be with you at bad times and to be killed? Imam Hussein replied, John, my friend, go to the battle. May Allah be with you. May Allah be with you, John. Imam Hussein alayhi salam himself then helped dress John for the battle. He mounted John on the horse. John was very pleased with himself as he headed towards the battlefield. On his way to the battlefield, he remembered his time with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He remembered how dearly the Prophet loved his grandson Hussein alayhi salam. John's eyes were full of tears as he reached the battlefield. He spoke to the soldiers on the other side. Look at me. You have seen me with the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Remember the Holy Prophet by looking at me. You say the Holy Prophet is the messenger of Allah. You call yourselves Muslims. Do you think the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi will be pleased with you for killing his beloved grandson? He continued, What has Hussein done to you? He is innocent. Leave him alone, save your souls from the fire of hell. Some narrations suggest John ran towards the enemy while taking off his shirt. He took his sword in his hands and fought bravely. John was attacked and arrows were fired from all directions. John fought the jihad bravely. Alas, how much can an eight-year-old man thirsty and hungry for three days take as he fell he cried sayyidi hussein mawlaya hussein 
my master, come to see me. Let me see you for the last time. Imam Hussein alayhi salam heard John crying. He heard him calling for him and he rushed to the battlefield. Some of the companions also accompanied him. Hussein reached the battlefield where John was lying wounded and taking his last breaths. Imam Hussein alayhi salam placed John's head on his lap. Tears poured from Hussein alayhi salam's eyes. John, I am very sorry. You are leaving my home without food or water. John, please forgive me. Master, 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 John replied, why are you sorry? You have done me a big favor by letting me fight and sacrifice my life for Islam. Imam Hussein then put his cheek on the cheeks of John in his last few moments. An important supplication and a ziyara which is narrated from Imam Sadiq sallallahu alayhi for the companions such as John and others which is a ziyara often recited during Muharram and at other times and especially on Thursday nights. The ziyara which is very well known addresses the Ansar, the Sahaba Assalamu alaykum ya awliya Allahi wa ahibba'ah Assalamu alaykum ya asfiya Allahi wa awidda'ah Assalamu alaykum ya Ansar deen Allah Assalamu alaykum ya Ansar Rasulillah Assalamu alaykum ya Ansar Amir al-Mu'mineen Assalamu alaykum ya Ansar Fatima Sayyidati Nisa al-Alameen Assalamu alaykum ya Ansar Abi Muhammad al-Hasan ibn Ali al-Wali al-Nasih Assalamu alaykum ya Ansar Abi Abdullah So here the ziyara addresses and greets the companions as those who not only stood to defend and to sacrifice their life for Imam al Hussein, but it demonstrates the fact that this form of devotion and sacrifice is indeed one for the religion of Islam, is for the Holy Prophet, for Amir al Mu'mineen, for Imam al Hassan, and before that for Fatima al Zahra. And it goes on to say that Bi Abi Antum. وأمي طبتم وطابة الأرض التي فيها دفنتم. May my mother and my father be sacrificed for you. May the earth that houses you, as far as your graves are concerned, be pure. And indeed, it is pure. وفوزتم فوزا عظيما. Absolutely established that they have attained a great victory. Finally, فَيَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ مَعَكُمْ فَأَفُوزَ مَعَكُمْ And this is where the supplication comes. Whereby we are praying to Allah, we wish and we pray that we are with, we were with Imam al Hussein, so that we attain this eternal success and victory at all times. Sometimes people ask the question, if we were with Imam al Hussein, we'd do the same as the companions did. Because here we have... Sayyid al-Shuhada, the purest of the pure, the most knowledgeable of the people of his time, the most God-fearing, the best as far as mannerism is concerned. Why would anyone not support him? This is something that many of us may reflect upon, especially during the season of Muharram and at other times, that we, if we were with Imam al-Hussein, we'd do the same. And there was a scholar who actually questioned this, who actually said once in a lecture, that one should not give so much emphasis to the companions of Imam al-Hussein because if we were in their position, we'd do the same. But the companions of Imam al-Hussein did what they had to do. What any sane and believing man or woman would have done being next to Abu Abdullah, would have defended him, despite all the hardship and the difficulty, they would give in their lives because Imam al-Hussein promised them Jannah. And Imam Hussein promised them eternal success and happiness in the, in in Akhirah, and therefore they did what every person would do. And in his dream, this scholar sees himself in the battlefield in Karbala. 
and he sees himself next to Imam al Hussein, who asks him and says to him, Stand to protect me while I've, whilst I'm performing my salah. Because the arrows were being directed towards Imam. He was being showered from all directions with the arrows, and therefore stand to do this. The scholar said that I saw myself in my dream wanting to defend Imam al Hussein, but every time an arrow comes towards my direction, I duck down. Until when the Imam finished his prayers, I looked at him and his body was literally full of arrows. And he looked at me and said, now you doubt the devotion and the sincerity and the commitment of my Sahaba. And that truly struck this individual and many others when we think about what this particular supplication and ziyara aims to establish. That if we look at the lives of the Sahaba of Imam al-Hussein and we seek to take lessons from them, then at least we can be inspired. And when we say, Ya Laytana kunna ma'akum fanafuza fawzan azima, we need to begin to fully acknowledge what this particular maqam is all about and start to look at our own lives, start to look at our own conducts with our own family members, with the people in society, as far as a relationship when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator is concerned, our wajibat and staying away from that which is forbidden. All this constitutes an element towards attaining or reaching towards what the Sahaba of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam eventually established.